Hello and welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we work on a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. In today's video, we will work on the pace statement view to make it a little more visually appealing. And then we will go into the progress view and make it so we can dynamically change the background and the foreground colors. And so when we're done with today's video, we'll be able to head over to the hours progress view and change something in XAML like the bar color from light gray to something like pink. And when we press save, we'll see it dynamically change on the view itself. And with statement earnings view, we can pass in a double and it will parse that double into some kind of dollar and cents. So let's get into it. Let's head back to our pay statement view. And instead of using just this label that has like the 10 or whatever it is, um, let's go ahead and change this to its own view. So it'll be something like a statement earnings view. And then we can apply styles to it specifically and not have to worry about cluttering up this page. So let's go into our views folder and let's add a new file. And this file will be a content view and we can name it statement earnings view. Once those files are created, we can close the code behind. And in our .xaml that was created, we can just use a stack layout. And in this stack layout, we're going to have three labels, the first label and the last label. The first one will be the dollar sign. And then the last label will be for the cents. And we can make those smaller so that our, our actual whole dollar amount is larger and it'll give it a nice look. So let's make our three labels and this text will always be just a dollar sign. And then our next label, just for a placeholder, let's go ahead and just put a 10. And then our last one, our last label, its text will be like the dot zero zero, which is like the cents. And then we wanna make sure this is stacked horizontally. So let's set its orientation on the stack layout to horizontal. And we wanna make sure spacing is set to zero. And now with this view created, let's head over to the pay statement view and let's use that view. So we are already importing the namespace for views. Let's go ahead and just delete this label here, the one that is bound to earnings, and let's replace it with views statement earnings view. And now when we press run and we head over to our summary, we should see that statement earnings view that we created. And now when we can make changes to the XAML and when we save, we can just see how it applies to the actual app. So let's go ahead and set the font size to the dollar sign. So we'll just say font size equals and something small like 12 is fine. And then we'll do the same to the cents. We'll make them both the same size. So font size 12 again. And then when we say we should see them get a little bit smaller. And then we want font size on the whole dollar amount to be a little larger. So we'll say font size 20 should look okay. And then when we save, it'll update the app and we'll see that they're not very aligned. So let's go ahead and align them by applying a margin to the first label and the last label. So let's give it a margin of something like zero on the left, five on the top, zero on the right and zero on the bottom. And when we save, we'll see that it drops that dollar sign down. And then we can do the same for, we'll we can just copy this margin over and paste it into the bottom and then save. And that will move the dollars and cents down. But it actually looks like it moved too far. So we have a couple options. We can make the dollar amount bigger. So maybe something like 24, or we could decrease the margin. I like the way it looks with 24. So we'll leave it at a font size of 24 for the whole dollar amount. And then I want to apply some kind of rounded background. And there's a couple ways we can do this. We could drop down to a renderer to cut the canvas on Android, um, or we can just wrap everything in a frame. And that's what it will do for now. So we can just say frame and it's has shadow will be false. It's corner radius will be something like 30. And then it's padding. This is important that we set padding to something small. It's I think defaults to 20. So let's set it to something like zero. And when we save, we're not going to see any difference because we're not setting a background color. So if we just move the stack layout into the frame and save, we might see that it kind of gets cut off on the corners, but we, we don't really see why because there's no background color. So let's first set the background color on the frame. So back in the frame, background color equals something like lime green. And when we press save, now we should see a background on that frame. And it doesn't look quite right because now it's clipping the view. So let's apply a margin to the stack layout. So on the stack layout, let's do a margin of something on the left and right, but not the top and bottom. So we can do something like 10 comma zero which applies 10 to the left and right, zero to the top and bottom. And now when we press save, our frame should grow. And let's make sure our stack layout is centered horizontally and vertically. So on the stack layout attributes, let's say vertical options equals center and horizontal options equals center. And now when we save, it should move that into the middle of our view and perfect, that looks good. So in app.xaml, we created a resource for a color and that's the color we use on the time page. The time clock page is this nice blue color. So let's use that. So we can go into app.xaml to take a look at that color resource. And it's called primary header color. So let's copy that. 
Let's head back into statement earnings view. And instead of this background color being lime green, let's use the static resource of, and we'll just paste in the name. And then when we press save, that should change our color to blue. And now it looks like we should have white text in there. So let's change the text on all three labels to be white. So we can just say text color equals white. And we'll do that for all three. And now when we're done and we save, we see that we have this rounded frame with, with the nice blue background and the white text. And that's, that's excellent. The last thing we're gonna wanna do on this uh, the last two things we're going to want to do on this is set in the pay statement view. We want to set the width request of this view and I'll show you why in a moment. Let's, let's just set it to something like 60 for now. Let's just set it to something like hundred for now. Let's just set it to something like 80 for now. And then when we head back to our statement earnings view, if we change this 10 to something like 100 and press save, we'll see that our view gets jumbled up. So we want to make sure our view can handle something like 5,555. And the reason for this is because we want to allow the view to be wide enough to fit the earnings and we want it to be consistent on each line item. We don't want it to be only, you know, 80 pixels wide if you have $10 and then 120 pixels wide if you have $5,555. So now we can go ahead and fit our view. So let's just say 120 and that gives it a good amount of padding. So I, I think that looks pretty good. And now if we drop our placeholder down to just something like 10, uh, we'll see that it has a lot of padding on the left and right, but the view width will stay the same. And that's ultimately what we want. So that looks great. So we can keep that. The last thing we want to do is make sure we can accommodate when you, when we take in a double, let's say for earnings, we can, we can put the 10 where it belongs and the, the zero zero where they belong. So let's go into the code behind on the statement earnings view and let's make a bindable property. So we can do that by saying public static read only bindable property. And then let's give it a name. So we'll just say earnings property. That's fine. Equals bindable property dot create. And then we have to use the name of a local variable. So this can be um, just earnings is fine, which doesn't exist yet, but we'll create it. We need to give it a type of for its return type and that'll be a double. And then we need to give the type of the view creating. So it'll be statement earning view. And lastly, we want some kind of property changed. Uh, we want to hook into the property changed event and we can just call this on earnings property changed. So let's go ahead and use a quick fix to create that method right above the method. Let's make our public double earnings and then get will return a double and it'll be get value and we'll just get from our earnings property and then set will set the value of the bindable property. So earnings property value and then in our on earnings property changed method, we need to get a, it's a static method. So we need to get a reference to the bindable object, which is going to be a statement earnings view. So we can say view var view equals bindable as statement earnings view. And then we can get the dollar amount and the cents amount by taking in this double, turning it into a properly formatted string, and then grabbing substrings. But we can't set it to the view yet because we haven't named the views. So before we move further in, in the code behind, let's jump back over to the view and let's give the, the last two labels a name. And so we can do that by saying X name equals, and this comes from the X namespace as declared above, and we can just call this something like dollars label. And then we can provide a name to the sense label. And then when we save, we should be able to use these right in the code behind. So we'll head to the code behind and then we can get that formatted string. So first we want to ensure that new value is a double. So we can say if new value is double, and then we can just use a lowercase earnings. Then we can get the formatted string. So var formatted string equals earnings dot two string. And then we can just pass in a C and that'll convert it to currency and give it a dollar sign. And we don't really want the dollar sign because we're already hooking that in. So let's go ahead and get a substring from the dollar sign to the decimal. So we can say dollars label. So view dot dollars label dot text equals formatted string dot substring. And we'll start right after the dollar sign. And then we want the length and the length is going to be all the way up to the index of the decimal minus one. So we will say formatted string dot index of We'll use the decimal point and then we'll minus one on that. And that'll get us like that 10 in the example of the $10. So then our view dot sense label dot text equals formatted string. And then we'll just go right from that index of the period or the decimal all the way to the end. So it'll just be the start index. So we'll say dot substring and it'll be formatted string dot index of, and we'll use the period again. And that's where we'll leave it. So that'll take care of 
parsing out that double into a dollars and cents and then pulling the dollars and the cents separately from the string. But now we need to pass that value into this view. And so if we go into payments, pay statement view, we can bind to earnings here instead of that label that was binding. So we can just say earnings equals binding earnings. And so this will bind to there. And so now if we change the default from like 10 to 12 or anything, uh, we should see that when we run the app, we should end up with 10 because that's that's the, the value of that last pay statement. So let's go ahead and stop the app and rerun it. And if we head over to the summary page, we'll see that even though it's defaulted to 12, it took in the $10 from the earnings, it parsed it out and it is appearing to show correctly. So that'll work there. The other thing I wanna do is instead of hard coding the colors on this hours progress view, I want to make it so we can choose the colors. So we can do that by heading over to the hours progress view. And in the code behind, we have the max, min, and current, but let's create two others. Let's create two other bindable properties. So we'll make a public static read only bindable property, and this will be bar color property. So we'll have bar color property and a fill color property. And so bar color property equals bindable property dot create. And we'll use name of bar color, which doesn't exist yet, but we will create it. We have type of, and this is a Xamarin forms color. And then we have type of, which is the, the declaring type. So this view, so hours progress view, and let's give it a default color of maybe that, that dark gray. So that if we don't set a color, there's still some color to rely on. And so we can set color dot gray. And now we'll make another static property. Now we'll make another static bindable property. So public static read only bindable property. And then this will be fill color property equals bindable property dot create. And we'll use name of fill color, which doesn't exist, but we'll create it. Type of Xamarin Forms color, and then type of the hours progress view. And then here we want to give this a default as well. And we can just use the blue color that we're already using. So just color dot blue. And now we need to make that bar color and fill color. And so both of these are of type Xamarin Forms color. So we can say public color bar color and then get will do the same it'll just return a color it'll use the method get value and it'll return bar color property and then the set will just set the value of the bar color property to the value and then we'll do the same for fill color now that we have a way to set these in xaml we can head down to each renderer so let's go to the android renderer first is fine and in set, instead of setting these colors here we're getting a reference to our view so we can access their colors directly. So instead of saying color.gray.toAndroid, let's say view.barcolor.toAndroid. And then instead of saying color.blue.android, let's say view.fillcolor.toAndroid. So now we can set those colors in the shared project and the renderers can use those colors when they need to. So let's head over to the iOS renderer. Instead of using uicolor.gray.cgcolor, we can use view dot bar color and then dot two CG color, which is a Xamarin forms helper method. Then we can do the same thing down here. So instead of blue, we'll say view dot fill color dot two CG color. And so now both the renderers are using the colors that we define in XAML. So just to make sure it works, let's run the app and we should see no change. So heading over to the summary page, we see no change. And now we'll go to the pay statement view. And on this hours progress view, let's change the bar color to something different than that regular gray. So we can just use something like light gray or something like that is fine as long as it's different than that dark gray. And then fill color, we can just use our nice blue color that we're using on the rest of the app. So we can say static resource and we can use the primary header color. And when we press save, we see that the background color changes as well as the foreground color changes. So I think this page is good enough and functional until we go into the actual design work and, and give the whole app a reskin. But this page is, is good enough for now. So now we can start heading over to the profile page. I think that's a good stopping point for today's video. If you like the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. Thank you for watching the Xamarin Forms tutorial. I'm Patrick, and this is the Let's Create series.